There is a folk tale about the origins of Piero. This is the story of how Piero got his name and his familiar black and white costume. A little boy was found abandoned in the snow by St Peter outside the gates of heaven. The snow turned into a suit of white clothing. St Peter adopted the child and gave him his own name, Little Peter, or Piero. Piero was forbidden from playing with any mortal children outside the gates of paradise. But he disobeyed, and where the mortal children touched him, his white suit showed black splodges. The character of Piero originates from Pedrolino in the Commedia dell'arte, or Italian comedy. He was a comic peasant character, or Zanni, from which we get the English word zany. Traditionally, Piero's white costume is too big for him, with large, floppy sleeves, a rough and a white, powdered face. The black pom-poms that are now so familiar in the Piero character come from the adaptations made by a 19th century actor called Jean Gaspard de Bureau and other mime artists from France. A Parisian mime show, L'Enfant Prodigue, was performed at the Prince of Wales Theatre in London in 1891, and it's believed that this was the inspiration for the first of the British seaside Piero troops. The Italian and French Piero characters wore large-brimmed white felt hats, but the English Pieros adopted the conical short-brimmed hats common in Victorian pantomime and circus clowns. The pure image of the Piero troops was essential to their success. Will Catlin was famous for insisting that all his costumes were cleaned and pressed daily. Indeed, even when the fashion for the black and white Piero troops started to wane, they were replaced by what was often called a costumed concert party. These might be glamorous top hats and tails like the folderols, or more exotic versions such as the vagabonds. The monochrome costumes stand out beautifully against the blue, green, grey of the British sea and sky, and the fact that an entire troupe is dressed almost identically means there is a real sense of ensemble rather than the individualism so common in the music halls or variety theatres inland. Makeup has a very practical role in live performance, especially when language is less dominant. This means that emotions have to be expressed visually so that both characterization and actions are exaggerated. The makeup and flowing costume help accentuate the physical expression of Piero. Few Piero troops have such strong makeup as the Pierotters, although some, like Bridlington's Waterloo Pieros, did apply more than most. Piero troops replaced the so-called nigger minstrels. These black-faced itinerant performers were regarded as crude and rough for the late Victorian taste, especially at the seaside for family groups. Their makeup was traditionally made from burnt champagne corks, a finer density of cork making finer charcoal powder, which was then soaked overnight in water and applied with a brush or rag. The clown white, used for some Piero troops, was made from a compound of petroleum jelly and zinc oxide, an unfortunate combination that could cause skin cancer. Both the white and black makeup create a mask effect that is a consistent part of British folk performances from Mummers' Teams and Morris Sides to the medieval mystery plays and Commedia dell'arte.